Hello and welcome to Vidush Academy Life Coding. Today I'll try in about 5 or 10 minutes to show you how to run tests in Golang. So, starting with the Visual Studio Code and the only line that we have is the package main. So, we write the main function immediately here and the functions that we are going to test, they're going to be called simple foo and simple bar. Okay, so simple foo accepts one argument and returns a result and an error if the error exists. As I said, it would be really, really simple. So, result equals zero, for example. And we start here, for example, if our argument is zero. Yeah, the one passed. Then we throw an error. The idea of this simple foo is that it's just a random strange function so not be zero in simple and in order to make it a bit more interesting we put like if true and then else if and just writing the structure now okay so the first true will be if n equals bigger than 5 it will return n times 5 and a new for an error because we return two things here uh, else if n is smaller than 5 return n minus 5 and a new and the third else is return n times 2 nil. So just let's test it. FMT dot print line strange. Why does it forces me to go there? Uh, print line mm, simple full out of uh, three out of four FMT errors is here FMT is here let's run this one go run mango and it returns minus one and the error nil yeah. is it okay mm, actually no it should be yeah, minus one and goes here. Okay. So for the second function, I'm going to write it right now. And the second function is pretty much simple bar, which is pretty much like simple for some kind of random logic. The idea is that we get an int, we return int and error, and based on some kind of strange rules, if the n is bigger than 10, we multiply it. If it is smaller than five, we take n minus 10. And else we write result equals n and we return result in nil. And in this case, we return an error if the parameter is 20. So yeah, pretty much that's, that's all. Uh, now let's start with the tests. So in order to have a test, what do we need? We need to have a separate file here. It will be main test.go like this and of course it is package main because it comes in our main package and we need to import testing let's not import it for the time being and simply write how test works test the function should start with test as you see here and just with the top it's perfect and control X has given us plenty of stuff. So let's see test. We're going to test 
simple foo. Mm -hmm. So test simple foo. And what are we going to do? We're going to say, okay, we want result. And the error, we don't care about the error. So that's why it is like this. They are both simple foo. 11. Uh, what will happen if we give simple foo 11? Bigger than 5. So bigger than 5, and it would be n times 5. So it should be times 5, 11 times 5. Should be result. Mm, should be 55. Yeah. So result different than 55. Pretty much write the error f percentage uh, b expected but percentage b received and the values are 55 and result so how do we run these beauties that's a good question let's try with go test yeah we see pass that's great and go test minus b will give us some information what exactly was passed and how it worked if we want to run a second function just to, to make a failing test just to see how it looks like test simple for f for failing so simple for 11 let's say if result is 57 we already know it should be 55 based on our strange logic <sighs> let's see yeah, we have one run, one pass. That's great. Another run, that's simple F, this one. And we have 57 expected, but 55 received. Uh, yeah, happens. So we have a complete failure. Yeah. But as you see, this method is actually quite tough because you have to do a separate function for every test if we want to test like 50 different inputs and outputs then the not so beautiful part is that you're going to write a lot and it will be a bit meaningless so there should be a better way and of course there is a better way so let's comment this beauty sphere and create some test information test simple pool simple full i'm sorry you didn't hear this one struct and our struct would have a name would have an n would have the expected value which would be int because our program is kind of simple and it would have also information where it has an error yeah and the first one that we're going to check is valid test so valid test out of okay let's make it a bit more interesting out of 12 12 times 5 it should be 60 and we have false valid test 264 and the first one is string so let's do it this way yeah, and the second one has error would be true. So in order to have has error in simple foo, our input should be zero, yeah, zero, zero. So how do we test these two beauties? And we put commas here, so everything looks good in Git. Uh, how do we test these two beauties? The following way, func test always start with test. So test simple foo. And we start with the beauties for anything. TT, that's a beautiful, interesting thing in range. Test simple foo. 
do the following. Uh, do the following, and the following is result error equals simple full number ttn. This one. Uh, just to understand what is this, let's simply print it. It's not a good idea to print like this on test, but the idea is that the range here returns two beautiful. Uh, Two beautiful results. The first one is the numerator, and the second one is the one passed. Uh, our code doesn't like that the name here test simple full, and that one are the same. Okay. Test simple full function. Okay. Uh, result an error. Mm -hmm. Let's see whether we will have problems running this way. Just to show what's going on. Undefined. Nope. Uh, these two things result an error. Were not liked. Okay. Just simple. Uh, yeah, like this should it have been, and then like this. Yeah, you see, zero and one are the first uh, results here. So pretty much this range test simple full returns two results. The first result is a struct with all these beauties, and the zero result, the a is zero and one the number okay so closing here the parentheses with the useless explanations and we continue like this and then like this so result error simple full ttn that's great and now let's make a check whether tt has zero which is normal and if the error it's actually new, that should be a problem. So this means that, for example, here TT has error. That's kind of expected. But if the real error here is new, then it is a problem. So this is how we should write it down here. Pretty much error was expected, but not received. Yeah. And the alternative is uh, was not expected but received and as far as it's received we can also put it here error error okay then some more information with the result here let's do it so if the result is different than our tt expected Please write the following error F percent uh, <coughs> K first percent V for the percent V I'm going to put the name of the test percent V then expect it percent value result is percent well, these are just placeholders for tt name tt expected tt result and let's run our new code go test v something is not good we still have a failure so after some research i debugged the code for you the error was coming because we were calling here L error on uh, error equals new as here so it was up here i can just show you like what can happen if we ask for a wrong error pretty much the same mistake we say that there would be a error on the valid test zero but there shouldn't be so this place here should throw an error fnt 
write or uh, print line FMT just showed up. So let's see. And this is the beauty that comes. And I'm looking for error here in big, big, big lines here. So yeah, don't call er error if error equals nil because it cannot return and it's going to give you nasty stuff. So this is how my code looks like. Of course, this is no error. And of course, these are errors. True, and then true again. And if I uncomment these ones here with control and slash, I can still do this. Go test V and I can see all the beauties inside. Yeah, pretty much. This is how it looks. And actually, now the funny and the interesting part, which is actually the whole reason I write the whole video, it's pretty much we can do this beauty. Go test cover profile equals coverage dot out and go to cover minus HTML equals coverage dot out. Uh, if I run it here on the terminal, I would probably get some error, but let's let's just see. Of course, error because of this. So I should run it here on the command prompt, and in the command prompt, pretty much we go to this folder, and there we write go test minus cover profile equals cover dot out. And then with this cover dot out, we use go to cover minus HTML cover dot out. So it says pretty much represent the cover dot out into HTML. First creating the file, then represent it. And now the beauty after clicking enter. This is what we got. The coverage, the coverage report in our browser it's actually rather really beautiful it's the green things says which part of our code is tested and the red things say which part of our code is not tested just to show you around i'm going to test a bit simple bar or better just text test uh, this else for example because it would be easier not writing a separate function uh, for s less than 5, it should be n minus 5. So if I give 4, it should be minus 1. Let's try it with our here. So I said 4, it should return minus 5 and it should be false. And let's go here again. And yeah, this one now is green. And the last one, let's test it as well, just to see how it is. Let's see whether the old report, yeah, the old report is also saved. The new report is saved. Uh, the, the last one would be, so else is not bigger than five and not smaller than five. So else is, n is five. So we give five and 10, and then this one should be also in green. So let's give it as well, 5 and 10, so it makes sense, 5, 10, do not try to look for some logic, let's see how it will work, yeah, everything is now function is green, all the ifs are tested, so great, so pretty much that's all, I really hope that you enjoyed the video, and Enjoy your day further. Bye from Vitush Academy.